time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready, we're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning, this is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my father, Big Bob Payne. What's shaking, Dad, on this glorious April weekend? What's happening? Well, it's all that happens, right? You know, the Masters comes and goes. It was a great Masters, Tiger won. And now we have beautiful spring weather, and it's, uh, we're on our way to summer. I can't wait. We're getting there. We're waiting for you to come back up here north, Bob. We're trying to warm it up for you. I know uh, Naples is perfect weather, so uh, we're only going to come back here when the weather's perfect as well. Yeah, just a few more degrees, and you'll be seeing a lot of me. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Well, we've got a great <laughs> show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about the Ten Commandments of Financial Planning. We're going to break down the ten rules you need to abide by with your financial plan. We're going to talk about important questions. Bob and I are going to discuss the most crucial retirement questions you need to be asking yourself, along with this week's financial propaganda, where we call out the worst advice the financial media has recently been broadcasting. And we also have our financial advisor, Aaron Desson, on the show this morning for our spotlight segment, where he's going to review and break down someone's real retirement plan for you. So let's hop to it. Bob, let's discuss the 10 commandments of financial planning. And the first one being, if your pre-retirement lifestyle is set with a view to what you can sustain after you quit the workforce, you're likely on track. Man, oh man, I'll tell you what, Ry, there's, uh, there's two things that happen uh, when, you, when we sit down with you is that number one, you don't know what you're spending, but if you do, at least you're halfway there. But you know, when it comes to putting together a financial plan, you know, having an idea of how much you're currently spending is really critical. And I think more importantly is most likely you're going to spend the same in retirement. You hear a lot of statistics, Bob, that say you only need 80% of what you, you need during your working years in retirement. That's not true. I would plan for more. No, it's amazing. It's uh, most people spend more. And most advisors, when they sit down and do your plan, don't factor that in. Big mistake. Yes. Number two, remember that Social Security is designed to replace no more than 40% of your pre-retirement income. And I'd say usually a lot less than that, Bob. Well, that does sound high, right? But where does the other income come from? Well, you have to look at, do you have a pension? And if you're lucky, you do, but not many of us have pensions anymore. And then you have to go to your portfolio to figure out how you can essentially turn that into a pension-like income stream that you can live off of in retirement. Oh, so critical, Ryan, just to have not just the income to supplement you know, that gap in retirement, but you also need to have a little bit of a hedge against inflation. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. If you're just depending on Social Security, you're in big trouble. So we got to really focus on where's that income going to come from, and uh, you know everybody needs to plan for that. Yes, which leads me to commandment number three. You need a financial plan and an estate plan. So not only do you need to figure out what you're going to spend in retirement, where that income is going to come from, Bob, but man, I bet you probably haven't had your will updated in at least 10, 15 years. It probably needs an upgrade. Yeah, I know, Rob. When, when, you, when you see an old will, what are some of the mistakes that you typically find? Well, a lot of times your kids now don't need guardians because they're grown up. Um, a lot of times you may have a trustee or an executor on your estate that's a brother-in-law that you don't like anymore. So sometimes the players need to change, Bob. So wait a minute. Well, here's, you tell me this, Ryan. Unless the IRS is your favorite charity, you need to update your financial plan so you're maximizing all the tax cuts that you can possibly get. And unless you want money to go to people you don't like or don't care for, you need to update your estate plan. Is that what you're saying? Well said, Bob. Number four, okay. never, never, number four, never forget the non-financial aspects of your retirement. It's not just about the pragmatic, I got to pay for groceries when I'm retired, Bob. A lot of you tie your, your, your self-esteem to your job and don't realize that all of a sudden you're not going to be going to work every day. What are you going to do with your time? What are your hobbies? What are your favorite charities? How much time are you going to spend with your grandchildren? You know, where are you going to travel? It's very important to have a non-financial retirement plan as well as a financial aspect of your plan. Yeah, bottom line is let's put together an aspirational financial plan, not just a pragmatic one. You got to have fun in retirement too. 
Commandment number five, pay attention to communications from your employer, Social Security, Medicare, personal advisors, and others, Bob. You know, Rob, you mentioned earlier that most of you don't have a pension, but some of you are entitled to a pension. I get a pension, Rob, and when I called to find out, you know, when it would start, they didn't have the correct phone number. They didn't have the correct address. They didn't even have my email address, and they had the wrong date when mom and I were married. Wow. Yeah, and I had a situation like that recently, too, where a client didn't know he was entitled to his pension early. He was waiting to 65. He's 58 today. He can take it today, and we did the math on it. It was a better deal for him to take it today. So you really want to know about all those different communications that you're probably not getting. And, right, how about last week? Chris was working on a case where he found someone who had a disability pension they were entitled to, didn't know it. They were going to start bringing that money in. That's $100,000 Chris found for that client. Wow. Yeah. So you need to pay attention to these communications. If you're not getting them, find out why. Number six, put retirement savings ahead of other goals. Rob, it's great to fund educations for your grandkids and other things, but make sure that you're financially sound first. Well, Rob, that's why I put all my money in retirement and I never gift you a dime. I'm sorry. (laughs) Wait a second. Let's change that (laughs) commandment. No, that's it. That's a number six commandment is set in stone. Well, that goes with number seven, save as much as possible as soon as possible, because once you're retired, Bob, the clock starts ticking. You got to get it all away before that happens. You know, I know it's difficult, Rod. We want you to live below your means, but you need to save. And more importantly, you got to make sure you're investing in those tax advantaged retirement accounts, especially if your company matches. Don't give up free money. Make sure you put at least enough in to get that company match. Exactly right. Number eight, recognize that your taxes may not be lower during retirement. Well, last I checked, the deficit's at a record, debt's at a record. What do you think? The federal government's going to start cutting spending? No, they're (laughs) going to look at what, right? Your retirement plan like it's a big piggy bank. I'll put this caveat out there, Bob. If you do tax planning now, a lot of times you can actually pay less tax in retirement, and taxes are probably going up, so the more proactive you can be, the better. Don't wait on that one. Right. I think we do a better job of recognizing that commandment than anything else we do. We've reduced so much of our clients' taxes in retirement over the last couple of years. Something to be really proud of. Yep. Money saved in taxes, just as green as any money you can make invested. Number nine, place health care high on your list of fixed expenses. It's a big deal, Bob. You got to factor in health care. It is, right. You hear about the donut hole in Medicare all the time that you have to plan for. Well, the big donut hole in your financial plan is your advisor hasn't allocated enough funds or enough attention to how much you're going to have in terms of health care costs for retirement. Big gap, something you need to address immediately. Yeah, no, exactly right. And number 10, invest in ways that will provide a steady income stream in retirement. Bob, you can't be reliant on the ups and downs of the market in retirement. You need something consistent. Wait a minute, Rye. You mean I can't put all my money into uh, Lyft or Uber's IPO and expect to uh, achieve my investment goals? <laughs> I mean, good luck with that, Bob, but uh, I say you can go to the casino and do the same thing. At least they serve you drinks. Well, you know, as your brother Chris always says, with income, you have a better outcome. Make sure that you own stocks that pay dividends and bonds that pay interest. And more importantly, make sure your bonds have a maturity date in case rates go up sometime in our lifetime. Yes. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need to get these 10 commandments of financial planning covered. I need to know the holes in my portfolio, the holes in my financial plan. Here's your shot to get a second review. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan. And we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at the whole picture March statements are probably in or print them off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal that's going to give us a bird's eye view of your entire financial picture. And we're going to look at all those critical components. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. What is that income gap going to be? What income do you need to replace? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio so you have a stream of income you can't outlive. We're going to look at diversification. There's a lot of underlying risk in your portfolio you don't know about. Did you get hit really hard back in December when the market sold off aggressively? Are you protected? We're going to show you how to bulletproof or protect your portfolio in retirement. And we're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden cost in investment portfolios you don't know you're paying on those mutual funds annuities, insurance products, brokerage products. Bob and I are going to show you where all the hidden costs are, show you how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. 
that we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine that most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is simply call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you are one of our next 10 callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. Our team will run for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. But of course, there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. Six six nine two. That's eight four four seven five two six six nine two. Hey, this is Bob Payne. I'm with my son Ryan. We're the Paynes. No, no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management. The markets worked their way higher over the holiday shortened week on the backs of good quarterly earnings and positive economic news from both China and the United States with weekly jobless claims now the lowest since 1969. Now, the Chinese stock market is up over 30% for the year as many U.S. indices approach their all-time record high prices. Following the lead of the tech-heavy NASDAQ index and the mid capitalization growth index, which have already reached new highs for 2019. Now, it feels like the 90s with technology stocks leading the way and Tiger Woods winning the Masters. In spite of the great start, many pundits continue to worry. The same experts who in January are predicting a recession in 2019 and a bear market continue to say, oh, they're not wrong. They're just early. My advice to them is when it comes to investing, you know, it's really hard. And it's okay to be wrong, but it's not okay to stay wrong. So as we used to say to our analysts back in my days at Old Merrill Lynch, which way is the arrow pointing? Well, history tells us that the markets that start out with big gains in January, February, and March, something that's happened 22 times since 1930, while well, the remainder of the year was up 20 of those times. The two exceptions occurred in 1930 during the Great Depression, and in 1987, the year we had the two-day flash crash bear market. As for now, we're in the second longest expansion in U.S. history. No hint of a recession, let alone a depression. Nevertheless, no bull markets move in a straight line and expect some volatility going forward. Bull market declines come and go fast, and you don't want to miss the gains that follow in a big, booming bull market. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, do I have a portfolio built that's appropriate to my goals, to my dreams, to my risk tolerance. Well, why sit there and wonder when you can know? Give us a call or simply text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know in the winter of 1780, it was so cold that the New York Harbor froze over? You could have walked from Manhattan to Staten Island on the ice. Let's hope it doesn't get that cold ever again. Although, if you had some sled dogs, it could do wonders for the commute. Anyway, keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. Mush! It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to give you the most common sense, practical advice you can apply to your planning and investing. And that's why we put together our newest guide, five ways to maximize your retirement accounts, give you all the different options you have to save money, save on taxes, from health savings accounts to 401ks to Roth conversions. We break it all down for you. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555 555- 888, five ways to maximize your retirement accounts. We give you all the different ways to save on taxes. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. So Bob, how can we figure out the answers to these crucial retirement planning questions? The first one being, how do you know how much income 
you're going to need in retirement. You know, Ryan, you know what I love about this show is when you just deliver these softball questions for me to answer. <laughs> I, try to, I, I, I try to make it easy for you. You know, figuring out how much income you need in retirement is as simple as getting from point A to point B. Okay, so that's our process, the A to B process. But what does that mean to our listeners, to the layman that's just listening right now? Well, first of all, right, you got to know where you are, right? It's like um, if you're out in the middle of the Bronx somewhere and you're saying, hey, dad, I want to get to the office. And I say, great, let me give you some directions. And you tell me you don't know where you are. It's really hard for me to tell you how to get from point A to point B. So the first thing you need to do is establish where are you right now at point A? Now, what is point A, right? Well, point A is kind of a tally up of all things going on in your life right now. So that's financially speaking, right? Do I have a 401k? What do I have in savings and cash? How much am I putting away? Really just an inventory, Bob, of your current financial life. Well, it's more than just that, right? Right. So it's like, how much do you have in financial assets? But also, what are you entitled to? What are your passive income streams that you're entitled to in your lifetime, right? You have Social Security, pension, maybe an inheritance. How about a royalty from an oil well? We have a couple of clients that have those. So it's just, it's not just how much you have. It's also what passive income streams you're going to receive in your lifetime. So that's the starting point, point A. Now what's point B? Well, point B is where we want to get to, right? That's what we would call the proverbial, whether it's called retirement or financial independence, that day when you can actually live off of your portfolio or financial assets and you don't have to generate an income anymore. You don't have to go to work anymore, basically, Bob. So that distance between point A and point B is how much time you have to get to those goals, correct? And how much time you have to maintain those goals. So, you know, how do you do that, right? How do you determine once you have those facts, then what do you do? I mean, you have A, you have B, you have the timeline. Now, what do you do? Yeah. So the real magic to the formula, Bob, if I can use that word, is what we call reverse engineering, right? So the whole idea is, you've heard the saying, you know, you want to start with the end in mind, is you want to start to work back from point B and then reverse engineer how you're supposed to get there. And that comes down to everything from what kind of risk do I need to take, right? Because look, if you've done a great job saving, you have a lot of money put away, our philosophy is don't screw it up. Don't take more risk than yep. you have to, Bob. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it determines how much risk you need to take. It determines whether you're taking enough risk. And it's so powerful because you're able to see every year for the rest of your life what you look like financially. And if you're going to fall short, now's the time to do something about it, don't you think, right? Yeah, no, exactly right. I mean, this is the thing, the whole idea of updating those projections. And that's why another thing, Bob, is the worst thing you can do is sit down with a financial planner, have them put a plan in place for you, and then set it and forget it. The whole idea is, and just like a GPS, if you're trying to get to your location, sometimes you get off course, right? You go down the wrong yep. way and you have to get on track again. That's the whole idea of looking at this stuff on a, on a regular or annual basis to update your goals and make sure you're still on track because you are going to lo lose you know, your I, way along the way. You know, you always say to me that the, the one thing that's lacking when it comes to financial planning is there's a lack of common sense. I mean, isn't it common sense that every advisor would tell someone that they should invest their money based on an A to B process? Uh, unfortunately, what I find is that most of your portfolios, most of your asset allocations, the way you're invested was based on some risk tolerance questionnaire that you answered 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Oh, it's the worst way. It gets even worse, Bob, because then what you do is you say, well, I need to diversify my money, which means, okay, I'm going to open an account over here with this broker. I'm going to put some money in the bank in this savings account. I have a 401k over here. Then what happens is you have all these different people recommending all different things, which end up all being the same when you put it on a spreadsheet. And worse, you end up what we call just a collection of investments. Yeah, that's, that's what happens all the time because when you answer that questionnaire, and the thing is, you probably answered it years ago, but how you feel about risk is really based on how your portfolios perform lately. For example, at the end of December, if we had you take a risk tolerance questionnaire, your tolerance for risk would be really low because the market was down pretty heavily in December. Now, the market's almost at an all-time record high, right? How would most people answer those questions now? 
Well, you don't know. I mean, given how scarred you might have been from December, you might still be on the risk averse side or you might be becoming more risky as the market's going up. And that's the thing. You know, our emotions are swinging back and forth, Bob. And that's where that A to B process comes into place because it keeps you in check. It says this is the risk you need because this gets to your goals. It's not based on your whims and your gut feeling about what you think the markets are doing, which is just a terrible strategy because as humans, we make terrible investment decisions when it comes to our emotions. What I love about the A to B strategy, right, just reveals all, right? You can sit there and say, oh, look, if we can reduce your taxable income by buying municipal bonds, you'll achieve your goals earlier. If you take Social Security properly, you can achieve your goals earlier. If you save more money in your retirement account now, you can achieve your goals earlier. So you're able to take every one of you and look at you in terms of your A to B process and tell you exactly what you need to do. There's no, maybe you should do this, maybe you should do that. Hey, Rod, let me ask you a question. If you went to a physician right now and you're going to have brain surgery and the, and the surgeon came in and said, well, you know, this is all what we could do, Rod, but you know, what do you think we should do? What would your answer be to that? <laughs> I'd be very nervous to use that brain surgeon. Right. You, you want someone who's going to say, I have a plan for you, not like, hey, do you want to do this plan? Do you want to try something else? No, <laughs> right. that's not a good strategy. And that's how you know right now if you have the right advisor. If you have an advisor that sits down with you every year and runs a wealth projection, puts it in writing, shows you what you're going to look like financially every year for the rest of your life, you have the right advisor. If you have an advisor that only calls you when they want to sell you something, you have the wrong one, don't you think, Ry? Yeah, you need somebody who's going to be your your, your wingman, your financial wingman or wingwoman. Uh, we have a lot of women financial advisors at our firm that are going to really hold your hand through that process. And then, Bob, you get to that next level, level, what I call the pro level, where you fine-tune your portfolio for retirement. And that's everything from making sure you're utilizing every tax benefit available to you, everything from tax-free bonds, using Roth IRAs. There's so many creative things you can do from a tax standpoint within the confines of the law that can really get you on the right track for retirement. And Bob, in looking at fees, you know, keeping it lean and mean. So all those little things have a huge impact on your portfolio long term in your retirement. You know, Rod, this sounds like a financial GPS, and I can't imagine why anyone wouldn't want not only a financial GPS, but somebody that's expert at running it. And if you're sitting there right now thinking to yourself, I need to know how much income I need in retirement. I need to know how much I have in my savings account. I'm asking myself every day, am I taking too much risk? Or not enough. Well, here's your opportunity to know. All you have to do is be one of our next 10 callers and saved at least 200000 for retirement. Because if you have, Ryan and I will run for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. It's a full, holistic review. You know what? It's the only review you'll ever need, and there's no better time to do it than right now. We're going to sit down with you and review everything. All you have to do is gather those statements. They just came in at the end of uh, March. You have the first quarter in, you know where you are, you know what you're doing. You don't even have to open the envelopes. Just stick it in the shopping bag, put it in a folder, pick up the phone, call or text us. We're going to go through your whole portfolio and break it down to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. You know, you want to be certain that you're diversified. Now, everybody uses that word diversification. It's overused, but we're talking about true diversification. Make sure you don't have any overlap in your portfolio. You don't have anything in your portfolio that really can hurt you in a down market. We want to bulletproof your portfolio in this volatile environment. We want to look at fees. Yes, there are hidden costs. They're buried in that prospectus of the mutual fund. They're in that big fat contract that you bought with that annuity. We're going to reveal those fees to you to make sure that you're not being overcharged by your own portfolio. I don't know about you, but I really don't like being overcharged by anybody or anything, and especially my own portfolio. And lastly, income. You need a dependable, repeatable income stream in retirement. And the number one goal of being retired is to stay retired. Let's be certain you can achieve those goals. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together with one customized total financial and master plan that will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family has been perfecting now for over 40 years? That's right. For four decades. We've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk, and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. You can call or text at 
866-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion at no cost to make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's call or text at 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain, financial radio. Time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call it the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, what did you find out there this week in the just profane world of financial propaganda? Right, never ends. It never ends, right? There's so many headlines I could go over with you today, but this latest opinion we just got hot off the presses is there's no safe place to hide from the consequences of the biggest bubble ever. I mean, that sounds very dramatic. What is this big bubble that I have not been aware about, Bob, because apparently I've been living under a rock? You didn't know that the United States sits right now in the midst of the largest wealth bubble in the history of the world. No no one told me. Why is that? What's the rationale and what are the dire consequences that are going to come from this? Well, here's the problem is, you know, there's a risk of a big crash because the market went up. And if it doesn't crash, the alternative is just as bad, according to this author. OK, what's the alternative? I'm, I'm afraid now. I'm really afraid. Well, first of all, he's convinced the market's going to crash. But secondly, if it doesn't, the returns are going to be so subpar, you shouldn't even be invested. So don't even waste your time. Put your money on the mattress and uh, wait for apocalypse now. Exactly. It's like uh, I'm, I'm sure he never got you in the market, but now that the market's doing well, he doesn't want you in the market because, first of all, you're not going to make any money, even though we make new highs all the time. And secondly, we're going to have a big crash because we had a big crash before. So it's basically yeah. since the market crashed once, it has to crash again. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. Well, here's the thing, Bob. Interesting enough, the market is, is going up. It's been a very strong year in the stock market. But the great irony of this is, and I think we may have spoken about this last week, is we've seen $80 billion come out of the market this year. So everyone's waiting for this big crash, but really the money's already left the market with the market going up. And that's one of the reasons why we're not seeing any big pullbacks or the big days where the market goes down this year is because there's so much money that's already attrition from the market. Your bigger risk is that money finds its way back into the market, which is going to push prices up a lot higher right now. That's why market timing is so dangerous, right? And that's exactly what these financial propaganda articles are about. Hey, market timing doesn't work, but I can time the market, even though I've been wrong you know, for most of my career. right? We go back to 1996 when uh, Federal Reserve Chairman Greenspan said the market's exhibiting irrational exuberance. Well, if you time the market at that point, what happened? You missed the boat because the market ended up going a lot higher than what the Federal Reserve Chair thought at that time. He was completely incorrect. Yeah, it doubled. It doubled. Yeah. And so you have the same thing here, and he's saying there's no place to hide, so basically put your money under a mattress, and we know that uh, that doesn't work out too well. Yeah, and I think the other dangerous thing is it always sounds so smart. You know, always have some money in cash. But what you don't realize is sitting in cash is one of the most dangerous things you can do, which sounds counterintuitive, but cash earns, we talk about this all the time now, almost nothing. 1%, 2% that you have to pay taxes on. And the market's a great example of that. It had you put your money in cash, gotten out of the market after the market had this big sell-off in December. Well, you were missing all the dividends the market was still paying you. And we keep talking about this every week, Bob, but having bonds, having stocks and real estate in your portfolio, it's really about the income that they continually generate. And it's so important to your retirement plan that it's never a good idea just to sit in cash. You can make your portfolio more conservative, but it doesn't necessarily have to be in cash, which earns almost nothing. Right. You, you know, no truer words could ever be spoken. So what else did you find out there in this world of financial propaganda? <laughs> I found an article this week that said short-term improvements don't warrant long-term optimism. And then the article base goes on to talk about <laughs> there's the slowing of the Chinese economy, along with growing mm. evidence of European growth under pressure. So there's this big cloud of uncertainty over the global economy in 2019. And Bob, 
the reality of it is that's what we call, it's called backwards looking, not forward looking. When you start talking negatively, you're hearing a lot of negative news about the foreign markets. And why is that a bad thing? Well, it's so funny, Rob, when you say that, uh, you know, this is backward looking because the market, right, the financial markets are forward looking. Everything you know is already priced in. Would it surprise you to know that China, which is getting all the negative headlines, is up over 30% this year in their stock market? Wow. Yeah, you would never know that from the headlines, right? All the headlines have been very negative on China and the rest of the world. And even the European markets are up as much as the U.S. markets this year. So I think it's- the European those markets that are nine months high. Yeah, exactly. With the news saying everything's slowing down, that's looking at things in a rear view mirror. And the other thing you want to think about, Bob, is it's so important over time to have a global portfolio. You know, We end up getting very U.S.-centric, and that can be very dangerous because the U.S. is not always the best game in town. No, it really isn't, Ryan. It changes on every 10 or 15 years. Everything reverts to the mean, which means that everything that goes up you know, comes back down, at least temporarily, right? It's two steps forward, one step back. You know, Corrections are normal. Crashes aren't. But you know, valuations matter. And you want to have a truly diversified portfolio, which this gentleman probably is telling you that, oh, the only place to be is in the markets that are already up the most. Yeah, and that's a dangerous game to play. And not to say the U.S. markets aren't a great place to be, but when you think about the big picture, and let's face it, if you're going to be retired, it's going to be a long time. It could be 20, 30 years. Well, the U.S. has an aging population. We've got a huge budget deficit, Bob, and our growth rates are going to be slower than the rest of the world over the next couple of years. So you have to be smart about that, and you have to make sure you position your portfolio for the future, not just because the U.S. did well the last couple of years. It's not always going to be that way. Isn't it normal behavior, right, for an investor to want to be domestically focused? I mean, don't we tend you know, to put most of our money in the U.S. because we simply live here? Yeah, we do, and it's not a good strategy <laughs> because it doesn't <laughs> always work. The other thing is, Bob, we talked about income. Having a global portfolio produces a lot more current income than just having a U.S.-centric portfolio. So again, if you're getting close to retirement, you're retired now, it's all about generating cash flow. And that's another reason why having a global portfolio is a much better deal right now than just owning, let's say, uh, Amazon and Google or just U.S. stocks. Well, you know, Ryan, I think what you're telling me is that non-U.S. stocks are selling at a 21% discount to U.S. stocks. The dividend is 1.5% higher. And historically, you know, when you buy something low, that's the way to invest. Is that what you're telling me? That all sounds like very sound advice, Bob. I always take my own advice. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need to make sure that I'm on track. I'm generating the income I need to on my portfolio. I'm well diversified. I'm not just sitting with too much money in cash waiting for the crash to come. Here's your shot to get that second opinion and get yourself on track. If you're one of the next few callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan. And we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at the big picture, simply bring in those March statements or print them off the computer, bring them in the office. Bob and I are going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where you get a bird's eye view of your entire financial picture. And we can start looking at all the critical components, everything from fees. Yes, I know it's shocking, but there's a lot of hidden costs in that investment portfolio and those mutual funds annuities, insurance products, brokerage products. We're going to show you where all the high costs are, show you how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at diversification. Do you have a well-allocated, diversified global portfolio? Do you have too many accounts in too many different places all doing the same thing? And did you get hit really hard in December when the market sold off? Bob and I are going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio for retirement and we're going to look at income. Income is so critical. You need to replace your income in retirement, or if you're retired now, Bob and I are going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio so you generate a portfolio of income that you can outlive. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now we have worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. Don't miss out. We have a few spots left. If you're one of our next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for retirement. Ryan and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. 
there won't be a plan unless you call or text. 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Hey, this is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Ryan. We're the Paynes. No, no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. After a while, all that financial noise seems to run together. Anyone? Anyone? It's time for a fresh perspective. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I are simple men, so obviously we like to keep it simple for you, give you common sense, practical advice. That's why we put together our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. It gives you all the ways that you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, Roth IRAs, Roth conversions, 401ks. We give you the full guide so you can save money on taxes. Money saved in taxes is just as green as any money you can make invest it. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555 555- 888, five ways to maximize your retirement accounts. Just giving you all the strategies you can utilize to save money on taxes. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555 888. That's the word bullish to 555 888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Simply go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. You can subscribe to the show there. Get every week's show to your inbox weekly. Get Bob's market commentary. You can get all of our insights on the market. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but check it out for yourself. Go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. And you can catch myself and other advisors of Payne Capital Management on all the major networks every week from CNBC, Fox Business News, Yahoo Finance, giving you our most up-to-date views on the market, the economy. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself for Bob, you can always email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. We answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And to help us with our questions this week, we have our producer, Mr. Mark Haywood. Hey, Mark. How's it going today? Gentlemen, always a pleasure to be with you. The weather's finally starting to break, and we're here on the show. What could be better? I couldn't imagine anything else I want to be doing right now. Where else would we be right now, rather than taking your questions out there? And that's exactly what we're going to do. We have a question that's come to us from Roger on Port Jefferson, Long Island. He says, Bob, I have an after-tax account with some investments that pay really nice quarterly dividends, but those dividends also create a substantial tax bill each year. Should I invest in something different in that account? Well, first of all, Roger, that's a great question. Yep, dividends are taxable, but the good news is qualified dividends, if they meet that requirement, are taxed as capital gains. So they're actually the lowest tax you could pay on on a taxable income stream. But you know, on top of that, there are other ways to generate income that can protect you from the federal government and sometimes the state government, and that's municipal bonds. Ryan, do you think Roger should consider uh, some municipal bonds in his portfolio? Well, the whole idea here, right, Bob, is you can't just make a decision in a vacuum. It really depends on all the other income, Roger, that you have coming in. And you can determine if you're in a higher or low tax bracket this year, because with the new tax reform, a lot of us are actually in a lower tax bracket, which means tax-free bonds may not make sense. But if you're in a higher tax bracket, that can have a huge impact. In fact, I just ran a portfolio projection for a client that if we had a 6% return, but it wasn't very tax efficient, he didn't make his goals. But with a 5.5% return, which is lower... But we use tax-free bonds and we use other tax strategies. He actually made his goals because that 5.5%, there was more money going to his pocket on that after-tax return, which is actually more critical. You know, Ryan, it blows my mind. Every time we fire the U.S. government as a partner in our portfolios for our clients, we help <laughs> well our said. clients achieve their goals. Yeah, you really can't discount uh, tax efficiency in your portfolio. You can really design your portfolio well to make sure you're paying the least amount of taxes. Absolutely, buddy. Well, thanks for writing in, Roger. Let's take another question now from Al in Monmouth County, New Jersey, who says, Ryan, I have two rental properties and both have a mortgage on them. I have enough money and investments that I could pay off both properties, but I'm getting enough in rent to cover the mortgages. So do I even need to pay them off? 
No, that's a really good question. These are actually really good questions today, more sophisticated questions. And a lot of that has to do with the borrowing rate on your money, right? So if you're borrowing at a high rate, let's say it's 5 or 6%, probably not deductible with the new tax reform. Well, your portfolio has to do 5 or 6% after tax, which means you probably need more like a 6 or 7% return. And last time I looked, Bob, it's very hard to guarantee a 6 7% return on your portfolio. Actually, it's impossible. So it depends on how, how high the rate of the borrowing is. No, it's so true, Ryan. It's uh, yeah, you can always have a little bit of a interest rate arbitrage if you have a low fixed rate mortgage and you're able to generate income to overcome that. Not a bad idea. But what I find with with debt, isn't it better to reduce your debt to what I call the sleeping point, Ryan? Yeah, I was going to say some of it's just personal preference because even if you keep those mortgages outstanding and it's a great rate. Well, if you're not sleeping at night, Bob, to your point, or it just bothers you having the debt, sometimes it's just better to pay it off because it probably isn't going to make a huge impact on your overall financial picture anyway, and it's really about financial peace of mind at the end of the day. And then the other thing is, is, uh, is rental income to rental properties, is that the best way to fund your retirement? Well, it just depends, right? It depends on how active you want to be. We always make this joke, but if you have a rental property... And, you know, look, things break. The roof might have to be replaced. And the last time I looked, my municipal bond portfolio that's 100% tax-free never calls me in the middle of the night to fix the sink. Well, you know, I, I did grow up in a plumbing truck with your grandfather, and um, you don't want me fixing your sink. <laughs> I've never seen you work on a sink in my life, Bob, for the record. Well, you know, that's, that's what your grandfather always said. I'm going to have you work in a plumbing truck so that you'll never do this for a living. Get a great education. And make sure you invest your money where it doesn't call you at 2 o'clock in the morning. That was always Pop Pop's rule. Yeah, (laughs) that was a very, very good rule of thumb. And this is why it's so critical. What you want to do is just a big tally up of all of your assets and just look at what your liabilities are, what your cash flow coming in, and then you can start to make better decisions around do you keep your mortgages or you get rid of them. But it has to be in context, again, of your entire financial plan. Hey, great point, Ryan. I have a question for you. On a scale of 1 to 10... How financially organized does uh, Roger and Al sound to you? I mean, these are more sophisticated questions. So my benevolence has no bounds today, Bob. I'm going with a hard six. Whoa, I think that's an all-time record high for you, but you're being very benevolent today, right? And so let me ask all of you a question. On a scale of one to 10 right now, how financially organized are you? How financially organized do you feel? Now, don't we all want to be a 10? Well, here's your opportunity. If you're one of our next few callers, and you've saved over 200000 for retirement, my son and I will create for you your own 360 financial portal. Now, this is a full holistic review, which will allow you to view your whole financial life in real time, anytime you feel like looking at it. Not only that, we're going to list your goals, you know, your goals of retirement, your goals of lifetime income, you know, all of your charitable goals. We're going to list all those on your homepage, and not only are we going to show you what your goals are, but we're going to have you tracking towards those goals and telling how you're progressing towards your goals to make sure that you achieve your goals and in a timely fashion. You know, we all want to be financially independent. Here's your chance. And not only that, we're going to take all of your portfolios. We're going to break it down into one simple view, which will answer the question of whether you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. You know, we want to be certain that you're truly diversified, not just across asset classes, but within asset classes. You don't need that overlap. You know, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing when you have the market go down like it did in December. We're going to look at your fees, your cost, the cost of your portfolio. What's the cost of achieving the returns you've achieved in your lifetime? We want to be certain you're not being overcharged by your portfolio. I don't know about you. I really despise being overcharged. We want to make sure that we take those fees that are hidden in your portfolio and take it out of your advisor's pocket, put it back in your pocket where it firmly belongs. And income. We want to be sure that you have a dependable repeatable income stream to help you fill that gap that we all have in retirement. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan that will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years? That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like you get from your financial point A to your goals, to your point B, to your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk, and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. 
So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you have over 200000 safe for retirement, we still have a couple slots left if you call now at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a no-cost second opinion to make sure you're on track for retirement at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I want to give you the most common sense, practical advice you can use. That's why we put together our latest and newest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. We break down all the different ways to save on taxes, everything from health savings accounts, Roth conversions, 401ks. You can check it out. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH spelled B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888, five ways to maximize your retirement accounts. Money saved in taxes is just as green as any money can make invested. We give you all the different ways to do that. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And we have a very special guest on the show this morning, my colleague, Bob's colleague, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management, Mr. Aaron Dessen. Aaron. How's it going this morning, brother? Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Bob. It's always great to be here, guys. Good morning, Aaron. We can't argue. It's always ex- extra exciting when we have uh, Aaron Destin on the No Pain, No Gain radio show. That deep, booming voice. I said even deeper than Bob's and I's. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I digress. Anyway, this is our Spotlight segment, and every week what we do is we dissect a real financial plan and cover the flaws or what we call pain points so you can avoid the same mistakes with your own planning and investing. And you worked on a case, Aaron. Why don't you break it down for us and talk to you about how you helped this couple get on their path to financial freedom? Sure. So uh, we met with a couple in their mid-60s. Uh, the husband was semi-retired, and the wife is looking forward to retiring in the next year or two. Um, and a couple of the concerns, they really wanted to make sure that they could live comfortably in retirement. Um, and they really wanted to get a closer look at their investments to see if they really had balance and diversification and see what kind of fees and expenses they were incurring. Now, I'm looking at the spreadsheet put together. I love that because it gives you a bird's eye view of everything. And for a couple that's ready to retire, this is a pretty freaking aggressive portfolio. Yeah, I mean, that one of the things that stood off right from the bat was, you know, currently their 75% of their investments are exposed to the stock market. Um, and actually within wow. that, 51% is really just in two, two sectors of U.S. markets, which is really concerning. Yeah, and I'm looking here, they have like $100,000 just in one specific stock. I mean, are they sleeping at night? What's going on here? (laughs) I think, um, you know, over time, just sort of letting investments ride. I know that as the husband got into semi-retirement, he sort of started working with a friend who we found out, you know, just the the fees were really out of control as far as advisory and the high-cost mutual funds that he was getting into. And they really just, you know, they never had anybody take a close look and really tell them, how their money is invested and, and what they're paying. What are the so what's secrets? happening now, since they're overweighted in the equity market, they really don't have much in terms of income. What are they going to live on if they do retire, Aaron? Exactly. That was another thing that we found with our analysis. Um, we could double their income in retirement, which would obviously cut their income gap in half. Yeah, that's I mean, I'm all for capital gains, but the hard part is when you can't buy lunch with uh, relative performance. Can you, Ryan? No, Bob. Last time I looked, it's not accepted at major uh, restaurants in New York City. Aaron, another question. I mean, did you talk to them before December when the market really sold off or after? Because, I mean, looking at this portfolio, I mean, they would have gotten hammered back in December when the market sold off aggressively. So we actually talked to them after December. It was in early February, I believe. So they had started to see that market rally a little bit. But I think you know, the the December correction was a big reason that they really decided they needed to come speak with someone. Well, the thing that really stands out to me, Aaron, is not just that they're, you know, aggressively invested for someone that's about to retire, but they're paid, it looks to me, about double in fees that any portfolio should uh, be charged. 
Yeah, the fees, especially in the uh, the husband's managed account, were really egregious. I mean, you don't you don't see that too often. I mean, the the fees that they were being charged are almost twice as much cash flow or income as the portfolio was generating. Yeah, and that's a bad rule of thumb when you have more fees coming out than the cash flow that the portfolio generates. <laughs> that does not make sense to me mathematically. <laughs> I, I have a rule of thumb, right? The income should be greater than the fee that the advisor takes. Yeah, yeah I, I love this mentality. Well, you know this. This portfolio is playing all this great income, but that's going to go towards my fees, not your retirement. Sorry about that. You know, that's a bad deal. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, when we went over all this with the client, it was really, really a shock to them and a big eye opener because, um, you know, half of these fees are sort of embedded in the statement or not even disclosed. They had no idea what they're paying and what income they were generating. And, you know, that, that was a big reason that they came on to work with us. Yeah. And I think that's that's the key right there, right, is you really got to know what you own. And, you know, if I could add another between what you increased on there or decreased in their fees and increase their income, that's another, I'm looking here, like $20,000 a year. That's real money. Think about that 20000 compounded every single year or that you can spend as opposed to touching your principal. I mean, that can be the difference between make it in retirement and running out of money. You know, guys, I think this is the beauty of this analysis. Not only does it tell you how much income you could be generating, but it also demonstrates how much you could lose if we have another 2000 or 2008 if you're not properly balanced. And clearly, uh, this couple is not properly balanced. Well, another financial masterpiece, Aaron, as Bob likes to say, great job on this and great job getting this couple on their path to financial freedom. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need to know what's going on in my portfolio. I need to know the fees. I need to know the risk. I need to make sure that I have my portfolio set up for retirement. Here's your shot to do it. We still have a couple slots left. If you call or text right now, myself, Bob, and Aaron Dessen will run for you our total financial master plan, and we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review just like this. Just get those statements from March, put them in a folder, print them off the computer, whatever, bring them in the office. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal and give you a full bird's eye view of your whole financial life. And we're going to do the same analysis. We're going to look at those fees. What hidden fees do you have in your portfolio? Do you even know what the costs are? We're going to show you where all the hidden costs are in your portfolio, how to reduce those fees so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at income. We're able to double the amount of income this couple is going to use for retirement. They're not going to touch their principal. Can we show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio so you have a lifetime of income that you can't outlive? And we're going to look at diversification. What risks are you taking? Are you still taking risks that you shouldn't be taking? December was probably a good litmus test for how much risk you have in your portfolio. We're going to show you how to protect yourself, bulletproof your portfolio for retirement, then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine that most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now we've been working on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844 752 Six six nine two. This is your opportunity. Don't miss out. If you're one of our next few callers, you've saved over two hundred thousand for your retirement. Our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there won't be a plan unless you call or text eight four four seven five two six six nine two. That's eight four four seven five two six six nine two. Another great show, Aaron. Always a pleasure, man, to have you on. You always sound like uh, you got everything under control. Even if there's chaos in the background, I would never know it. <laughs> Couldn't do it without some help from the pain boys. <laughs> <laughs> now you're really in trouble. If that's where you're getting your help. <laughs> Big Bob, what's on tap for the rest of the weekend? Temperatures are rising, Rye. The market's rising. Ah, oh, nothing could be better. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy it. Life is good. Well, have a great weekend. And as always... Be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.